Hello and welcome to the Gangnoon Hockey Centre for day six of the Para Ice Hockey Competition at Pyeongchang 2018, where the Mercury reading continues to rise as this is semi-final day. We started with eight, we are now down to four, and what a game you join us for here. It's the hopes versus the world champions as Canada do battle with the Republic of Korea. Canada so far have been flawless. They have the three victories and no defeats as yet. But they take on a side here in the Koreans that have been the most exciting, I would say, in the tournament thus far. They are no strangers to drama. They're no strangers to getting this crowd in behind them. And they've got a superstar in their lineup, as we'll see him here in a moment. Jung Si Won is the number 14 player for the Republic of Korea. He's got five points. He leads this side. And he's very much, as I say, the poster boy of this Korean Paralympic Games. As we look at the matchups here in the semifinals, the United States of America and Italy in the other semi, and this is the passport through to the gold medal game. And this, perhaps the biggest game the Republic of Korea have ever taken to the ice for. And officiating this one, we have the Austrian pair of Christian Nikolic and David Nottager, and the Swede Andreas Lunden will be there for assistance as well. It's a big game for all here at the Gangnoon Hockey Centre as the Republic of Korea look set to get another medal in these games. And how big are this one? This could be. We are expecting a capacity crowd in this 10,000-seater facility, but the world champions are the ones in their way. It was a year ago in this exact venue that the test event also doubling up as the world championships took place. And it was Korea who took bronze in that competition. Canada took gold. Ken Babby found a little bit of a different tactic against the Americans in a gold medal game, and they were very impressive. They seem to carry on from there as they are strong throughout. They have four players sitting at top of the scoring right now. On defense, Armstrong look for Dixon is world class as well. Tyler McGregor up front with Liam Hickey, an outstanding trio. But Seo Kwon Suk is as intense a coach as you're going to find. And he has put together this Korean side that are the bronze medalists from the World Championships. It's number 14, Young Si Kwon, who you're really going to look out for. But they've got a number of different options. Yu Men Yun in goal. Their goalkeeper is going to be challenged today, though, from a very aggressive Canadian offense. Corbin Watson gets the nod as Canadian goaltender then. They have been sharing out the minutes equally between Watson and Dominic Larocque as well. 67 minutes each. But it's Lee Jae Wung for the Koreans, who you would expect will have a busy semi-final today. But he knows he must come up trumps. It's an interesting decision as his numbers aren't probably as strong as Yu Meng Yun's, but Yu Meng Young has played the lion's share of hockey in this tournament. 102 minutes, it's just 32 minutes and 47 seconds exactly that we have seen from Lee Jae Wung in the Korean goal. Tyler McGregor's been outstanding. He's one of those players on nine points. He along with Armstrong, Dixon, and it's Hickey as well. Shola Mickey with eight. There he is, the rocket man. He seems incapable of not delivering. Maybe against the Americans, you'll say he went a little bit quiet as the Americans basically muscled him out of the game. Westlake, the captain for Canada, maybe taking a little bit of a different role in the construction of this lineup for these Paralympic Games. Getting to the top of the table for the Canadians is entirely their mission here in Pyeongchang and returning to the gold medal position. Canada have been ruthless so far in this tournament and they will be looking to be party poopers quite simply at the Gangnoon Hockey Centre today. They know they will be in the minority against this vociferous home crowd. But as for Korea, they have the wind in their sails and can they use that as a token of momentum here? It's the semi-finals at the Gangnoon Hockey Centre. Canada against the Republic of Korea. And we are underway in Korea getting the first face off under their belt as people here still continue to take their seats. It was the Sung Hyung Wan there that was flirting with the put, the two 14s going toe to toe towards the back as now Canada try and get their game into flow and already Korea are putting them under the pressure. And we are gonna see a lot of that in the first period but they have to make sure that they don't max out. 
It's important for Korea to be physical, close down time and space against Canada. Here they come on a breakaway. And now McGregor with the first opportunity of the game, and it's a big save from the gold center for Korea, Jay Wong, who will feel very good after that one. And the first moment where he's been called upon has shown exactly why he's starting this game. Great release pass by the Canadians up the middle to get McGregor in on the breakaway. That's a little bit of a challenge when you're overly aggressive as the Koreans. The Canadians can find a pass to connect it with a forward who gets in behind the opponent's defense. And Korea have to make sure that as hard as they go, and they certainly went hard there into Dixon, that they don't go too far too quickly and have a rush of blood to the head that allows that space for McGregor to be potent because he almost punished them that. And Korea fortunate their goaltender was equal to it. As this is now Canada coming forward on the near side with Adam Dixon. Two goals and seven assists to his name. One of the best defensemen in the world. He was trying that thread through there into the Korean offensive zone. As now comes Hickey. And he's surrounded by White. But he gets the shot away and that blasts wide. And again, the Canadians chancing their arm on a couple of occasions. This this opening couple of minutes as Delaney gets himself into a tangle in the corner and Korea are trying to give him a bit of a ride here they've wedged the puck in the corner and I wonder how long this will be before the referee will just call this puck dead preferably they like to keep it live the Canadians have pulled it out and now Armstrong and he's checked very well in front of the crease Bowden picked up the loose puck and he's blasted it over well this has been a raucous start to this game but Canada on three occasions have gone close now it's Delaney with the gap and he's missed the target as well and how much longer are oh, Korea going to ride these waves I'm not too sure it's a rocky situation for Korea right now Canada have not missed as many opportunities as this in the tournament this far they're coming again and now Hickey trying to arc around the back flicks it onto the left blade it's a reverse effort towards the center of the crease that is well snuffed out and a sense of relief around this stadium as Korea can eventually get it out of the defensive zone and make the line changes. It's an excellent clearance there, as not until it crossed the line, the goal line of Canada right there, did the linesman actually instruct that it was going to be icing. It was a well-weighted clearance, and the reason why it's impressive, as we look back at McGregor's shot, what a save. It's just the right shoulder from Lee J. Wung, and the most important part of that is you've got to be in that position he was. An excellent defense in front there as well from the defender, Zhang Dong Shin. So the Koreans committed to the defensive cause in the opening stages. This time it's Canada on top in the face-off as they are showing no mercy right now and they continue to apply the pressure to the gas. And dealing with that very well indeed was Kyung Jong Lee because he was flooding around his own crease that and just had to sting the puck but then get it away as quickly as possible as well into the right area sticks going flying it's the Korean Messi Sung Hyung Wan who now has the puck but he's completely lost it as the swarm of red jerseys come forward and this is blood and thunder at its finest here in the semi-finals of the para ice hockey and Dixon goes for a low one and again miraculously saved as it came for McGregor second time in this first period he's been denied his seventh for the tournament this is incredible for the Koreans to have denied the Canadians in this opening three minutes and 23 really the Canadians should have scored by now this ricochet that falls favorably for McGregor that's generally a goal but a save made and I'm not entirely sure if Lee J. Woo knew that he had made it, but he gets across in time, and most importantly, collects that rebound for safety. Well, Lee, Lee J. Woo, they're going across like the puck was his prey, and goodness me, didn't he catch it and tear the meat out of it. He has made two very important saves so far, both against McGregor and this remaining goalless. There's Canada in red, come forward once more. And they get the rub of the green as well. Delaney force wide. He's drifting across and waiting for the options. And there they come. And a right glove save that from Lee J. Wung on this occasion. As he has certainly been kept busy. And he's answering all the questions posed to him. But for how much longer is Hickey, uh, Hickey should I say, gets the puck stuck under his sledge. And eventually, on the defensive once again, Korea can just try and punt it into the neutral zone. But it won't reach its intended target as Bridges buys time, then gets Hickey on the wide, he's coming through, Hickey surely he scored, and eventually Canada 
have got a breakthrough which they deserve and the relief amongst their ranks might now must be rife. The 19-year-old gets his sixth of the tournament and Canada are off to a flyer. As big a goal as Liam Hickey has scored in this tournament and probably his life so far as this an opening goal when it looked like Korea were starting to flirt with shutting the Canadians down. He just drives the outside lane here, forces it right between the wickets of the Korean keeper and Lei Jae Woon. He can't stop that one. It's a little too much, a little too quickly, and the Canadians have grabbed the lead. Well, it's not really affected the mood of this place. Lee J. Wung really exposed there, but not on the first occasion. However, it is the first time he has been beaten. Uh, Sholomiki now as the latest one to venture forward. It's come nicely for Corbin Smith. Dancing on the left onto the right blade then, and a tame effort from him. Yeah, it's food and drink for the goaltender. But Korea just haven't settled into this one so far, and you have to say it has been a 100 mile an hour start but Canada have the presence of mind to ensure that they aren't caught up in the atmosphere. Well, it's very real, isn't it, that with the way the Canadians were denied in those couple of real legitimate goal-scoring opportunities, they would have converted them at any other time in the tournament. So you start to doubt yourself a little bit there. As the puck doesn't go in in a big game like this, you start to think, until you score that opening goal, is this going to be a little bit of a crazy day where the Koreans get the home crowd behind them and a miracle happens? Well, the Korean game plan, quite clear, is just to ruffle the Canadian feathers. But those feathers are looking quite pretty right now after that early goal, as Korea can finally get some territorial advantage here. And with the puck is Kim Young-sung, who pulls it back. And that was just squirmed in the centre and killed by the Canadians. And here they come on the counter charge. It's Corbin Smith, who's trying to wrap round his finger there, Lee jong Kyung. And the latter has done very well to force Smith out wide, but still McGregor has the presence of the puck. And he's just lost out in the end. But you can't take your eyes off this one. And already we've had six minutes, we've only had the one goal. And we could have had so much more as Westlake waits in the centre. And did he get a touch? It doesn't matter, because Canada are two goals ahead. And just like that, they turn the screw, Cozzolino Definitely got some point out of that, wasn't it? A sister a goal. They won't care. It's Canada 2, Korea nil. Good things happen when you put the puck on goal, and especially when you have players in the front of the net as well. Lee J. Wung has too far a distance to cover here. The shot coming from the outside from Corbin Smith, and then it's the touch actually by the defender in front of Westlake, and there's no chance there for Lee J. Wung to respond to that late redirection as it's Westlake who might have got a touch of it, but he might have been able to play that puck square up. It's Westlake who gets given credit. It may go to Smith as they reevaluate this. And suddenly this crowd dampening mood ever so slightly, but well, they are watching one of the great power ice hockey sides of our time, the world champions showing exactly why they have that title here at the Gang Noon Hockey Centre in the opening stages of the first period of this semi-final. Dixon, oh, he was past three jerseys there and he was clattered by the final one, but still Canada keep possession. Now with Westlake, he's got McGregor into position and McGregor might get the rebound. They surely will score. And has that gone wide? Goodness me, Westlake with the Maradona there, trying to punch it home. And it goes wide and Korea once again surviving somehow. He was swatting at flies up there. He caught the fly, didn't quite kill it, as he ended up knocking it on to his teammate. And as a result, it's a hand pass in the offensive zone. But Canada breathing hot and heavy right now. It's heavy petting. In fact, they're already on their way to where they want to get to, as this is a flurry of chaos in front. And Westlake, like a pinata, as he tries to smash it open and get it into the Korean goal. Chance for a breather, Canada 2, Republic of Korea nil. This one far from over. Just getting confirmation that Dom Cozzolino does get credit for that second goal. It's its third of the tournament, it's unassisted. And that's just come up on the big screen here in venue. And I think they're just trying to spare the blushes there of Jung Sung Hwan, who seemed to be the man inadvertently getting his stick onto the end of it. 
And from our vantage point there, yep, it was a nine, but it was the 19. Dom Cozzolino with a great, sensible, very fundamental Canadian play to put the puck to the net. So Canada look to pro box more. They don't need much of an invitation as Hickey tries to take out the linesman there inadvertently. Uh, still manages to keep control of the puck now with Dixon. Dixon trying to bide the room. Bowden's got loads of it, and there they go again, and that's it, the outside of the pipe. And Dixon was the one swiping towards goal. Now looking to assist Bowden again. He tries to thread it through, and career at sixes and sevens and every number up to 100 right now. They are really struggling with the Canada pressure, but they might just get the fortunate break here. That's a proud rule for Jang John Ho, and he just couldn't quite get to grips with things. And this just, well, spinning around like there's no tomorrow. This going from end to end. Korea still with the energy and the enthusiasm to get one back. Uh, Ju Sung Hyu now is the man latest to be checked into the side by a combination of Armstrong and Hickey. And you have to say Korea may be two goals down, but they haven't let up their spirit levels. There's been no penalties as yet, but right now they're forcing the issue of Korea. Look at them go. Jun Sung Wang was the latest to try that ambitious outside of the right blade play around the corner. And it was squirmed away by Watson, who so far has been untroubled. But if anyone's going to trouble him, it's that man there as he fires it towards the back. And Watson flailing. I don't know why he went for that. Maybe getting caught up in the intense pressure of this game. And Jung Sung Wang tries one. And that's blocked by Armstrong. And this crowd know whether it's their first game or third game of the tournament. That Young Sung Wan, when he gets the puck, it's a reason to get excited. It's been over a game since Korea have scored in this tournament, and this crowd is anticipating it. If it happens here in the first period, this place is going to be certifiable as these fans are awaiting a moment of possibility to take down a giant in the pair ice hockey. It's a tug of war on the far side that eventually the referee, Christian Nikolic, has to put a halt to. And you're quite right in saying there that the referee has let a lot of things go. He's allowed the nature of the occasion to really run its course. And what a game it's proven to be. That's the miss from Dixon. And yes, it's come to him at some pace, but that's an open goal. It is, and it's surprising really that Bowden makes the play because I thought his position was as good or better than Dixon's. And he could equally score, so he deferred there. And I wonder sometimes whether or not he's carrying a little bit of injury. But here comes Canada. McGregor's got an option, but he'll go for goal instead. That's gone wide. It's Cozzolino who picks it back up. Westlake fires it to his opposite number. And uh, still Canada are applying once more the pressure. McGregor didn't have the time to get it onto his left play. Perhaps thought he might. Westlake trying to just flick it behind him. Eventually will get the shot away. And there's just a spray of white jerseys in there, denying that puck from going in for a third time in the first period. We have six minutes remaining as Dixon fires one in low once again. Perhaps asking a couple of questions, but the torch paper more than lit on this occasion with McGregor now. Real chance, and then he just collides into the pile of debris in front of him. And this is Canada, who are still trying to play their game in very tough circumstances. Cozzolino, again, that's gone wide. And this must be the fourth or fifth phase now, and still, Korea are standing strong. Now they come towards the other end as the crowd get going for Lee Ju Seung. He's dispossessed by Dixon. And uh, Korea making a line change there. Maybe not the right time, because McGregor's got room and just missed by Westlake as it was fed through by McGregor. So much activity in front of the Korean goal. So many bodies as all five defenders committed, but equally all five offensive players are Canada committing to try to open up this goal. And McGregor with the latest effort towards the goal and well spread upon by Lee J. Won. Goodness me, hasn't he been busy so far? And you don't blame for Korea making the line changes as quickly as they are because they haven't got many opportunities to do so and they must be pretty shattered right now. Ten shots for Canada, the one for Korea in the game thus far. And that's an entire reflection of the activity that we've seen. Korea, when they've come down, they have looked promising. But the Canadians, just through volume and pressure, with the opening goal there from Hickey, just forced the door open as even their strongest player, Jung Sik Won, couldn't stay with the speed of that play there from Hickey, and then this redirection. So it's Cozzolino who plays it in a touch by the defender. Who knows what would happen if Westlake had a chance or a touch of it. 
But sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. And Canada certainly get a favorable return there from that good centralized feed. If this is your first time having the pleasure of watching Power Ice Hockey, you've been thrown in the deep end without anything to keep you afloat. This is one heck of a first period in the first semi-final. Canada 2, Korea 0. Immediately we are back underway and just with the persistence there is Bridges who goes round the pack and still he's got that option of red jersey spread around him in the offensive zone. This time just goes into trouble. Uh, but Canada are quick to retreat and get it with Bowden and now it's Dixon. Support there with Hickey and look how he just motors forward the turn of pace. Incredible from Hickey. He's dispossessed and unbalanced but still picks himself back up again and it's flooding around the crease and still not away. Lee J. Wung was trying to just kill it dead and even he couldn't manage. Bit of soap in the gloves perhaps right now. Uh, still coming forward to Canada. Blocked at the near post. And this has just been a complete onslaught from Canada who have barely had room to breathe from Korea but they know if they weather the pressure on them then they'll be against a very tired side from there on in. The challenge for Canada when you're so busy and so active with all five players, sometimes you have to work around your own players to get a shot opening as well. As here's now Bridges just forcing the issue and they just continue to scrap and claw for this possession. But have they in fact just got a little bit of an opening? That's what they need. They need a good look at goal in order to try and score a third. That was almost a good look there from Hickey. He drafted it across to Dixon, who was the furthest Canadian closest to the Korean goal which just shows how versatile a skater he is Dixon he really gets everywhere on the ice as uh, he'll go off for a couple of moments and get a bit of a break and uh, the puck on the near side also getting a rest as well as it's just been hogged underneath the sledges and uh, Young Jay Chu and also Hickey were uh, after that one Young Sung Wan haven't seen much of him in the Canadian territory so far and he spears into the side there of uh, the Canadian as Armstrong is now jostling with it and they're just trying to lead Career on a bit of string right now and Career are happy to follow at some pace as well but they will be leaving the gaps and it was almost another concession of a goal that as this time Cho Young Jae just must have had his heart in his mouth as he flicked that wide of goal this is a challenge though for Korea they cannot take this approach for much longer because this is basically trying to hold the water in, but the dam's going to break, and you're going to have a rush of Canadian goals here. The pressure is indication, as that was really quite fortunate for Korea, that they didn't inadvertently have that redirected off of the stick and in their own goal, but they are just holding on here, our Korea, and they will want desperately to get through this opening 15 minutes without conceding anymore, but I think that's going to be an ambitious desire. Dixon chancing his arm onto the left-hand side and he's well thwarted by two white jersey in front of him. Career have thrown everything at this so far and the crowd will respect their spirit but Canada just with the ruthless quality in the offensive zone and they could have had so much more than the two they've got. Again trying to be uh, rattled towards the back there but surviving well and coming forward with McGregor. Uh, McGregor's got no one with him apart from Korean companies. Denied that from going from icing. And um, will that benefit Canada here because the puck is causing all sorts of problems for Korea. Dixon now firing it back in and trying to catch Korea cold while they're still just trying to step their stall out again. Westlake now arcing round nicely. Bit of room to throw it to the left and just in front of Dixon. But still, Ken Babby's side are the ones who are penetrating and in search of a third. Cosolino, he's got Westlake just waiting there and eventually squirmed over and into the net. And Westlake has managed to get a Canadian third just before the intermission. And how crucial a goal could that be? It's great commitment from the captain just to sit on the back door and to not say no. He kept working. He didn't quit on the play. We'll see whether or not it's going to go to review. But what he does is he stays with it. It's still alive. I think he whacks it a second and a third time. And while the puck's alive, it's fair game. It isn't, you're not going to be credited for being polite in pair ice hockey. He takes the first whack, the second he shoves it through as he pokes it through a little bit of a pool cue there. And Westlake got that position. He gets the feed, 
He has the follow through and the tenacity to stay with it. And ultimately, he gets the reward of a third Canadian goal. Lee J. Wong must have thought he had all his doors locked there, but he found a pocket, Westlake. Canada now three goals ahead. Arsenal. They haven't mentioned so far yet, but the puck's been moving around the Canadian ranks so quickly, it's hard to get to grips with everybody so far. And Career are finding the same issue as well. They are three goals behind in the first period. And Canada had to be on the right game today because the new career would be. And they certainly match that. Where do Korea go from here? Um, what do they talk about in the intermission to gather their thoughts? Uh, put up a fight back in the second period. I think the last minute here will be indicating as to whether or not they're running out of gas or whether or not the Canadians can, in fact, apply some more pressure. This is now Hickey. Again, Canada are taking no prisoners and they want to bank as many goals as they can get. Bridges, and they get it. This has been diminutive from Canada. And it has been vociferous as well. And those with the Maple Leafs will be dancing into the intermission as Canada have half a step into the final, surely now. 4-0. The Canadian RPMs have been revving all tournament, but more importantly for them here in a semi-final, they've got it in drive. And for the Koreans, they can simply not keep up as an overpowering chassis from the Canadians is just taking this right down the motorway. And Canada right now are looking good with a 4-0 lead and another goal here in the last minute of play, which is equally devastating. Well, Billy Bridges is one of the few Canadians who can say they have got a gold medal in power ice hockey under their belt already at a Paralympic Games. There's quite a few youngsters coming through the ranks that are hoping that Pyeongchang 2018 will be there first and a chance to stop the American dominance. And goodness me, this is a warning sign to the Americans or the Italians, whoever they will face next, as Smith just spins it towards Bowden. And still, despite the pressure, Canada is keeping it alive as though they've got no issues at all. And they're probably enjoying this test, you know, Canada, because they may have not had too many like it so far in Pyeongchang. But they have come out unscathed and looking superb. It's a sublime start for the Canadians, who lead going into the first intermission by four goals to nil. Canada will not have had a test as strong as the, as the Koreans are providing here, and that says quite a bit, doesn't it? Because the majority of the play has been in the Korean end zone, but what the Koreans do offer is they offer that desire, that passion, that hunger to perform, is after the first 15 minutes, Canada have been able to speed ahead in this one and get those four goals and they've balanced it out as well. They've shown that depth of quality that they have up front and equally on the blue line. They have not showed any real caution or concern about allowing a Korean counterattack against them as all five players have been in the offensive zone having all manner of fuck time in the opening 15. Time for a break. Enjoy it in the first semi-final. It's Canada 4, Republic of Korea 0.
Gang Noon Hockey Centre is a hive of activity and vibrant with colour and noise as ever. But the home side will be the ones feeling a little bit hard done by at the end of the first period after Canada have absolutely stolen the show. They lead by four goals to nil and they have peppered the Korean goal throughout the duration of the 15 minutes. And if it wasn't for the Korean goaltender Lee Jae Woon, it perhaps could have been so much more. It's a challenge here for Korea because ultimately going up against the world champions, as we look at the stats, 12 to 1 the shot advantage, 72%, 70.73 is what the face-off percentage victories are. There wasn't any penalties in that period, but you go up against the Canadians, in fairness to the Koreans, it's like being thrown to the Lions. And because the Canadians and the Americans are still, in my measure, and I think we're seeing it here equally, the best two sides in the sport of para ice hockey. Korea are arriving into that top echelon here, and they started it with a year ago, and here they are returning to that same position here as at the semifinal stage. McGregor, it looks sure as uh, you bet dollars to donuts that he was going to put this one in, but he could not find the right loony and cash it past the Korean keeper. And again, this back for McGregor, and he must have thought he was snake bitten because he had just got the breakaway denied. And then there it looked as though the ricochet was going to be too quick for the Korean keeper to respond. And then look at Hickey. He just throws it in overdrive and then just pounds it right through the Korean in goal. And that extra gear is just too much to handle. Speed kills. And speed kills because you just haven't got an answer for it. And the fastest man for the Koreans couldn't do anything about it. This is a great play from Cozzolino. Westlake provides the perfect foil in front because they've got to respect him that he might get the touch. And of course, coming back, it is in fact there, Jump C1, who wants to play defense, but unfortunately ends up providing the third goal of offense for Canada. And they continue to keep coming. Westlake with every idea there of scoring and every possibility of creating a goal executed, but ultimately it was not to be in that instance. And then a little bit of scrappy play from the Canadians. Both sides so busy in this opening period, and Westlake just stays the course on the near side. He knows as a veteran player, whilst it's not pretty, it's not the sexiest goal he's ever going to score, they don't ask how, they ask how many. And in a game like this, this is where you need to just stay the course and score it ugly if you've got to. And he does an ugly goal right there for Canada. But it counts just the same, and that's a little bit more of the pretty variety as Billy Bridges goes up, up, and away to the top left corner. And these are the moments that you reflect back on when you're sat in your man cave in future years from now and say, boy, did I ever Ladies score with some style the there in Tiong Chang. But he's been doing it for well over a decade now as Billy Bridges, as both teams return to the ice and you feel the energy rise again in the Gang Noon Hockey Center. Absolutely, this crowd here, a capacity crowd in the Gang Noon Hockey Center, 10,000 seater facility. Uh, not dismayed at all, or dispirited, as the two sides come back out onto the ice. Canada in traditional red, the Koreans in white. 
And one thing that was certainly evident in the first period is Korea's game plan is to set their stall out early and say, we're going to go right into you and compete for every second puck. However, I think Canada have enjoyed that challenge. I think they have. It seems to bring the best out of them. They play the best against the best opposition. And when Canada and the USA take each other on a pair of ice hockey, it's the most enthralling watch that you're going to see in the sport. Korea are the next most emotional team, passionate team. They were physical in that opening 15. They like to play with speed. They are oh so efficient if they get a chance on the break. They only mustered one shot. They would love to create some more offensive activity in this second period. And with that, they would really change the dynamic of this game. Make no, no bones about it, the Canadians certainly will be well aware that they can't rest on their laurels here because Korea can pounce at any time. They just need a moment. However, they're going to need several moments in order to turn this semi-final around. Canada seems to already have the gateway to the final open and ready to be entered. Korea have quite a mountain in front of them. But the crowd will get behind them, they always do. Canada 4, Korea 0. Does the fight back start here? And away we go. And Korea, just like they did in the first period, managed to win the face, first face off of the game as uh, Arsenal will see off opposite number Jung Sung Hwan. As immediately Korea are just going right into the faces of the Canadians like they did in the first 15 minutes. They've got abundance of energy, the host nation. And I don't know where they get it from, but they never seem to lose it. As Canada are trying to expose the spaces again, and Westlake is through, and Dixon is there as well, and Dixon just can't latch on to the end of it. Almost put it under his spell, and if he did, it would have been a goal, surely. As he goes for a goal that time, a bit further out, but very close indeed, as Jung Sung Wan, first time he can really motor, and Arsenal has checked him, and Jung Sung Wan was rattled a wee bit there, and couldn't quite regain his composure. Dixon is just curving around, and reverse to Pozzolino, who again is checked, and Korea are everywhere on the ice. Canada well aware that when they do have the puck under their grasp, they have to protect it well. And that's where you can use the two sticks and just juggle it underneath the sledge. Canada do that as wise as anyone else. As Korea go for their first line change of the second period. McGregor now is just almost taking on himself, but eventually will work the room and it's deflected off Cozzolino. Westlake wanted to gobble up the rebound. The referee had already halted things and prevents anything from getting too messy in that crease. Westlake is providing a good little bit of sandpaper here for Canada. He goes and just dislodges his puck from the Korean keeper, Lee Jae Wook. He thought he had it frozen for a whistle. He did, as you heard the whistle sound, but he went for a little poke. And maybe he's fortunate not to have been penalized on the play. Then immediately he draws the attention of the Korean players as they come in and give a shove from behind. But you look at the numbers so far, 13 total shots. Uh, and nine saves coming from the Korean. But Dixon here rotating out of the corner, and you just see him just whistle one past the far right post. And they had a number of looks there in the opening minute, 29 seconds. And ceremoniously ordered out of that face-off circle. There's hand in suit. It's good to resume now, and Canada getting the upper hand on this occasion. Immediately to do something with it as Delaney just collides that into the challenges of Kim Young Sun. Armstrong now curving around the back, release it for Bridges, and he just cleverly tried to release it back to Armstrong there. And the thing about Canada is they seem to have, even when the spaces are so tight, the next pass figured out in the mines. Well, it's all about their alignment, isn't it? But they have very active defense, and they continue to provide that puck recovery ability and also the waves of puck support that you need to have. Here they go. They've avoided the offside, and here's Bowden. It's a tight angle, and he's done wise there to bend it round and just buy a bit of time, but Bridges uncharacteristically didn't have his bearings with it. And so Canada, Canada, should say, will recycle things and come once again. Hickey loses grip of that one. But took the sting out of the puck, and it's still there to be fought for. Bridges high there into the attention of Yang Dong Shin. 
But the referee happy with it and still no penalty minutes spent by either side in the box. Which is great to the referee and the nature he's got about this game. But it's been high tempo and fair as well as Hickey now. He's really well taken, is he? Now that will be the first penalty right on cue. Delayed by the referee as Dixon now has an opportunity. Canada going six on five to try and make the most of this play. And it is saved on that occasion by Lee J. Wong. And Korea will now be a man down. It looks as though it's the indication of a hold on the arm, so a holding of the opponent and from behind. That generally is a, the most likely position. Once you stretch and reach away from your sled, you're most likely going to get caught up in taking a penalty as the restraining penalties in fair ice hockey, just like they are in hockey. But from behind, if you grab a man just like that, and that warrants a penalty as he pretty much gets him in the Heimlich maneuver there and then just rolls him over as Kim Young-sung will sit down for two minutes or less. The Canadians are potent on the power play. Canada never need an invitation for a goal, but this power play will be just that as they try and strike the fifth. And with every goal, the optimism in this place just increases a wee bit. Of course, uh, whatever happens, Korea will still have a chance of a medal. But it might not be gold, because Canada feel as though their name is on that. Here's McGregor. Oh, it was good. He tried to get it onto the left play, but he was well checked as well. And that's the first phase seen out by Korea with 90 seconds left. It's an important clearance for Korea because if we really look at the activity so far in the soccer game, 90% of it has been in the Korean end zone. They need these breaks. Bridges, he's got two with him. He'll go for goal and he'll get the goal. And that is Canada's fifth. Billy Bridges second. And they've both been savage past Lee Jae Wung. As those in red find their voices once more, Canada 5, Korea 0. Well, you don't have to be a lip reader to understand what Billy Bridges just says after he scores this goal. This is a punctuation point as he just fires it low and hard, and it burns the top of the ice there, leaves a little bit of a water trail behind it as the hitch is for the high shot. Bridges goes for the low one, and as a result, the Canadians have now put a five spot on the board. And Bridges right now looks like money in the bank every time he gets it. Immediately, Canada picking things up. Of course, Korea back to full strength after that one, but they'd rather have seen out the two minutes after seemingly dealing with the first bit of activity quite well. They were just picked off there by Billy Bridges, who is quite formidable when he's in that position. And it's his fifth of the tournament as well as Canada strike five for the game. Now getting involved in things is uh, Shola Mickey. Well challenged by Sung Young Lan, and that will be a penalty, and Bowden, the guilty party, and I feel like that was teeing. We'll wait for the official verdict of the referee. He's still got the arm raised. Indeed, it is the teeing call that's so unique to power ice hockey, of course, using that end of your sledge, which is almost part of your body when you're doing this sport. And Bowden there just being a little bit too keen to get involved when the maestro had it. You can see, of course, yes, the aluminum at the end of the sledge will, in fact, do damage. Yes, they're fully with equipment from head to toe, but it doesn't mean that with the sledge you can't, of course, do damage to the body. Even the impact with equipment on can leave a fractured leg. So that's the reason why the team call is in fair ice hockey, as Bowden just couldn't get the angle he wants and the speed and the assertion that we see there from Young C1. Let's hope we see some of that here in the power play for Korea. It's their first of the game. Well, just like Canada got one goal from their first power play, Korea will be hoping that they can replicate that now in the next couple of moments. As the referee is just halting things ever so slightly and waiting for the green light from the technical bench. back underway as Korea try and find a route back into this contest. And it's going to be difficult as Canada immediately just in that red square are setting their stall out. It's looped in towards a dangerous area. And that almost caused carnage. Dixon there just adjusted his body well enough to go and dart towards the loose change. And Canada are going to see it out. 
The best way to describe that lobbing effort in is like a corner kick or a free kick in football where you have a line of players in front and you're just placing into an area maybe 10 meters out in front of the goal line. It just allows mayhem to ensue in front when you elevate the puck and, and everybody's watching the puck and you never know where it's going to bounce to. Now we're in possession. And um, with quite a bit of time, which uh, is something certainly that Korea haven't been too familiar with so far in this game. And it's Cho Young Jae, he's clattered by his opposite number 10. But it's going to break nicely for them now as they come forward. And the offside decision just shows how Korea had a rush of blood to the minds that uh, perhaps has spurned their best chance of getting an opening. Oh, they needed that roll there. They need that momentum, that continuous play, because every time it comes back to a face-off here, they run the risk of losing possession because the Canadians are stronger than them on the face-off. So they're coming across the blue line with attacking speed and strength in numbers. Those are opportunities that you have to allow to take shape. And if you have offsides like that, you're basically shooting yourself right in the foot. 57 seconds remaining of the power play. Uh, Zhang Dong Shin gets himself into a bit of a, a mess, but still managed to find a route down. Oh, goodness me, that was a rocket launch that towards the Korean net. Uh, it goes wide, but that me holds my breath for a second. Oh. As Korea are just playing with fire themselves now. And are they just signing their own death certificates, I wonder, because they got themselves into a bit of a mess. And now McGregor is adding more panic to the fire now as he's twisting around. Jung Sung Wan thinks I'll have a bit of this and get things clear because this is going to be the last chance Korea get with the man advantage. And there he goes, just stretching the upper body as he comes forward. And he found the release as well as he got heavily collided into there. There was no one in the center to pick it up. But now Jung Sung Wan out wide. He can do something out of nothing. He pulls it back. And that was a good opportunity. But unfortunately for Korea, Kim Jung Sung, the number 12, just couldn't get. Both sides up to full strength as Korea are still using this play as a token of momentum. And you feel until that play there that they really had Canada on the ropes. That was their best sequence and phase of activity offensively in the game so far. And I really was surprised that Jung C1 was taken out, I think, by Dixon in the neutral zone. He made the offload to his Korean teammate just to fill the right lane and to attack the blue line. And then he got just blown up by Dixon right there at the red line. And he got back up involved again. He had that play across the goal face. And from there, Korea with a little flicker of hope of the, some offensive creativity. Of course, the Power Ice Hockey schedule has been packed full of action in the group stages. But whatever happens between these two sides, day seven, they will both have off. Whether they have won or lost. As uh, that was seemed like a bit of holding there on Westlake stick. He's uh, escaped that as a free and lead young men. Uh, Canada looks to come forward again. We've uh, got a few moments after that penalty of not seeing them come forward, and they were saving that. Bowden there with probably a bit of an ambitious effort with the outside of the right blade at such a tight angle on the left side of goal, but still had to be saved by Lee J. Wood. Again, it's just interesting to watch Brad Bowden here as he comes in. He makes a decision to take the shot on the backhand, and he's got better than that. I've got to believe he's carrying a little bit of an injury. He sat out the first two games for Canada here in the preliminary round. He's not playing as we saw at the World Championships a year ago in this exact same building where he was the difference, I felt, in that particular competition. Yeah, 11.51 on the clock for him in this tournament before this game as uh, Armstrong that uh, beginning to ask a couple of questions as well. The forceful one towards Lee Jaywell, who again has answered. And you do wonder how many more than five it would have been if he wasn't starting as goaltender today. Korea do both two very good goaltenders. There was a question raised when it was Lee Jae Wong announced as a goaltender. And he's certainly been kept busy as he expected. Now Bowden, he wants to be the assist maker. And again it's saved. And it was the effort coming in there from, uh, I think it was Dixon. And the effort is well foiled. It may have been here, Canada's newest young gun, a baby face assassin, James Dunn, with a chance, and he takes it, and the great save, as that is fantastic service, and that's a blue liner to a blue liner there. 
in this situation for Korea. Dixon often in that situation as well. They're so active, the Canadian defensemen, that it is hard to differentiate them sometimes between the forwards and the D-men because they effectively work as a five-man unit. Yeah, James Dunn, the only member of this Canadian roster who weren't here a year ago at the World Championships, but fitting in nicely as Bridges is sniffing around for a hat trick. He'll provide Arsenal with some ammunition. And that was just behind Armstrong, but still the red jerseys hover around in search of a sixth. And we still have just under seven minutes remaining. We've crossed the halfway point of the game. Bridges well ousted there. And Wilson Wan has been picking up the puck in deep position so far, which is perhaps not where we're accustomed to seeing, because he does most of his damage in the opposing end zone. But he hasn't had those opportunities as of yet. He's tracking Delaney every glide of the way. And Armstrong just with a flick of the wrist into Bridges. As he then cannons into the challenge as well. Armstrong now with a bit of room to work with. The referee has already blown his whistle. And now it's just the Canadians in the offensive zone. And if you see Armstrong following up, it's an example again of the Canadian defense. They're so active that once they get moving forward, it's difficult as you can't really throw these sleds in reverse. As you only can go one way, you just kind of, if you can't, you've got to turn. And sometimes the turning is a little too difficult. You seldom see the players in pair ice hockey throw on the brakes completely. They can, but they love to keep themselves in continual motion. And they just adjust with where they think they need to kind of contour their sled as they move around the ice. McGregor. And just see at the top of your screen there, the charging of the Maple Leafs as McGregor got that put. All keen to get involved in the action, and even if they don't get a slice of it, at least they'll have distracted the Korean defenseman and made some room for a teammate. As uh, so losing track of it was Cozzolino, but immediately McGregor is there to sweep up for him, and that is a staggering stand in the bottom left of your screen. Canada with the 18 shot to Korea's one, and Korea's effort being that pretty tame one on a tight angle. Work for Corbin Watson has been few and far between, to say the least. As Westlake now is just getting that ahead of the Koreans, and that's the same for a lot of the Canada players right now. Even when it seems like a 50-50 scenario, Canada just seems to have that extra couple of percent that gets them onto the puck first. Dixon, it was a poor clearance from Korea, who are struggling to get out of their own end zone. Canada have already pitched their tents and almost got a sixth. A great save by Lee J. Wung, and maybe that came off the helmet there, but it doesn't really matter what it was. He's putting his everything he's got on the line and using the equipment to his advantage. Dixon pirouetting, and it wasn't the most flattering turn from him, but it still keeps things going. As Arsenal, Canada are still bubbling along and the favourites to get a sixth goal in this game. That save a moment ago, it's, it's often the case that a goalkeeper in pair ice hockey sometimes does make the save with the helmet or with the face shield because they can only use one of their other hands, the blocker or the glove hand, because the other hand is propping them up and it's keeping them straight and in their core strength, keeping them square to the shot. So they've got to decide if they're going to try to catch it or block it. And if they have misjudged it, then they end up using their head. And Min Su in pursuit of Dixon there from one corner of the rink to the other. And he's got it now, but it was just out of his reach. And again, just showing that when these athletes are stationary in the sledge, it's difficult to reach the puck. And it's straining on the upper body as well to work the arms again to get the cogs turning. Smith is clattered into. And now it's done. who's not afraid to get his teeth into the action as well. And it was an audacious reverse under the sledge there. But there's ricochet back for Corbin Smith as Canada are really flexing their muscles now, and that's deflected wide, and uh, about a 1,020 there from Choi Win Su as he goes flying. Still, the pressure is with those in red. Armstrong has got Bowden in space, Cholomiki is floating around the center as well with Smith, who's just buying his time and dragging the Koreans in that arc all the way to the near side before Armstrong eventually releases the puck, and he's got it again now. Goodness knows how he kept that. So deceiving that with the puck under the sledge. And he showed exactly how you do it. 
Korea not caring how they get the job done. It's not very pretty out there right now. As Canada have just given up possession. But the second period still taking up the same sort of attributes as the first. It's restless on the ice. And it's difficult for Korea to make the changes when they're camped in here like they are now. Delaney is just squeezed out of it by Yang Dong Shin. Same two going for it again. You know, Delaney's got a bit more time on his hands this time. Bridges just engineering a move back towards the blue line and managing to uh, ever so slightly nudge it towards Armstrong. Goes the other way for Hickey. There's always that option there for Canada. First one doesn't work out. There's always someone else at a different angle ready to receive. It's the instincts for Canada for the game and how the movement occurs in the offensive zone. That is really their heaviest advantage. Yes, their size, yes, their strength. Those are attributes that they do have in superior fashion to the Koreans in fairness across the board as a balance of personnel. But it's their anticipation, it's their support of the puck that really gives them breathless moments like you see from the Koreans. Number 14, Jump C1. They've been chasing and they've sent that puck for icing and the same five stay on the ice and they still have the defensive duties. As we look at the Westlake shot, it goes right off the outside of the post. McGregor to Westlake and he just pulls that one out of a pocket and sends it right off the iron. There's Arsenal into the final two minutes of the second period. This game going along very nicely indeed. As Hickey is waiting, Bridges taps his stick onto the ice saying, give it me now, but it didn't quite work out that way. It's hard with these athletes sometimes when they are on the turn to receive the puck. It can be quite disorientating as you're spinning around on that sledge. And sometimes, quite a hot day it is. And the two 14s again, Arsenal into Young Sung Wan. That's a delayed penalty, and it won't be delayed for much longer because that puck was going nowhere. And Jung Sung Wan just lays on his side. I think he's got a wry smile on the face as well because he knows exactly uh, what just happened to him there. Arsenal, the guilty man, and he'll be out for the next couple of minutes and the start of the third period. Yeah, he's got a, uh, a bullseye on his chest, hasn't he? Jump C1, and as soon as he gets the puck, there is a heat-seeking Canadian coming to separate him from it as soon as possible. And in this instance, it's Arsenal. And this a roughing call. That's fair enough. Sometimes it's important to take a penalty if that's your only option, particularly if it's against the most dangerous man on the ice for the opposition. Well, that whiteboard has seen a lot of action at these Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Games so far. Just the traditional pen and paper for Ken Babby as in his first Paralympic Games with Canada is looking to lead his side into a final with a possibility of a first goal since 2006 and it's going to plan so far despite the best efforts of Lee Jae Wong throughout the game to try and deny them. It's interesting watching these replays and looking at the depth of quality for Canada because both the Americans and the Canadians as we look at Jae Wong he's made the 13 saves they both have very similar constructed lineups and they just tinker ever so slightly as they try to mirror each other in many ways but Korea is learning from the two North American nations as well and in an example like this even though it is a Korean power play they are also learning as well how to execute and to push forward be impacting in these situations with the player advantage second Korean power play of the game and Greg is on that like a dart and now he has possession and he's just trying to kill the puck into the corner he's dragging the attention with him and the referee's got his whistle in his mouth. Is he going to let that go? Yes, he is. And now Westlake, he's lost one stick. He almost lost another. And we've got another penalty coming up now. And Korea there in panicking around and trying to make the most of their own power play. They've then just conceded the penalty. Well, I, I wonder here whether Westlake is going to get called for putting his hand on the puck. Westlake lost his stick here, and we're just looking to see. He lost his stick, and in desperation, he looks to smother the puck on the ice with his glove, and he's taken a penalty as a result. It'll be a delay of game officially. We'll see what the call is here as he comes across here, and they're going to give delay of the game. So you see him just reach out here. As soon as he loses his stick, he grabs it, puts his palm on it, and that's basically a no-no. 
as you're not allowed that. He was doing it to prevent the Koreans from getting it from him. And five on three for Korea, their best offensive opportunity. Absolutely. Uh, if they don't make the most of this one, then you have to say it's not going to be their day. Not long left of the second period, but they'll still have the two-man advantage going into the third if they don't score in the remaining second. Jung Sung Wan, who's got more space to play with than he has throughout this game so far, but hasn't really done much with that as the seconds tick down, and this puck is at the wrong end of the ice. And maybe Korea will just have to plot away way back into this, into the third. Just the one goal for Canada in the second period, on top of the handsome four that they got in the first set of 15 minutes. The goal coming from Billy Bridges, and it means that going into the second intermission, Canada are just closer and closer to that gold medal game. It's Canada 5, Republic of Korea 0.
This is a capacity crowd here in the Gangnoon Hockey Centre and they are enjoying every aspect of this game on the ice and off it as well. The noise levels are through the roof. Uh, Canada's performance is not too far off it, leading by five goals to nil, limited to just the one goal in the second period and half the shots on goal as well as Korea's plan to try and nullify that Maple Leaf threat is beginning to slightly pay off. Well, they've got an opportunity here with this power play to start the third period. They've got a five on three advantage. The Canadians have been dominant throughout as the scoreline would suggest, but just to put this into perspective here with the benefit of being here during the Olympic Games and now the Paralympic Games live in this venue, at no point in time have I seen the interest that we have seen today in this match here in the media tribunes and all the press. It's absolutely full capacity. And then you talk about the energy from the Koreans who are involved in this game. And it might be that they're going to be involved in a bronze medal game by the way this is shaping out. But this is absolutely intoxicating as we watch back in that second period. The Canadians who were massaging that Korean goal, they were only able to breach it once. But they were doing more and more of the little things to irritate, to cause disruption. Because in fairness, the Koreans have been rather disruptive to the Canadian flow. Although it's been going pretty much their own way as we watch Billy Bridges slot one in there and he has to be shooting it into the high 70 mile an hour. Even this one is low and it might not look like it's got a whole lot on it from the vantage point there. But when he shoots it and he elevates it and he gets all of it, it's a world class maneuver as these players are capable of going up as they are with a hot low submarine right there past the Korean keeper. And this right now from the Canadians, it's as they would want it, but they would, I'm sure, enjoy even more return offensively because they're such an activated team. They are designed for both ends of the rink, but they have players who all want to be involved in the offense as we watch them continuously roll out of these face-offs, use that secondary wave of offensive support with their defensemen, who I think are the best quartet in the world because they're always constantly offensively engaged. And one thing you can testify after watching this game as well is not only did Canada score goals from all over the roster, they score all types of goals as well. We saw goals in the first period that consisted of some great offensive play, including two or three of those in red, and others that were just hammered in on the line. And it shows that that depth that Canada have got and the versatility in front of goal as Westlake went for a bit of a stunner there, but unfortunately was uh, out of range. But the colour in this place and the noise that we have had over the course of the day, the games have been extraordinary in that sense, but typified on this semi-final day, day six of the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games, as All both right, teams well, begin to come here. onto the ice. Canada, quite measured, coming out. One of the interesting things you see is Westlake, with a wry smile, makes his way across to the penalty box area. You see a lot of smiles, which is great. It doesn't mean that there's any let up when it comes time to draw for the puck. But all of these athletes, as we see now, The Rock is given duties in goal, and that has been the MO of the Canadian coach, Ken Babby, to involve both of his players because you never know when one of your goalkeepers is going to get injured. You might need a replacement in a gold medal game or at some point in a semi-final game. And if you've got entirely all your eggs in one basket, then you may in fact have cooked your own goose as the distribution of ice time is an important part of managing the resources that you've got within your personnel. And Canada with three skaters now against five to start this third period are gonna be hard pressed. They're gonna have to skate well, but you'll find with Dixon out there, you expect that they'll probably try to control the puck and it'll be interesting to see whether the Koreans can generate enough activity to really put pressure on Laroc now in the Canadian goal. It's Dixie, uh, Dixon, Hickey and Bridges that will start for Canada, who will look to weather the initial 47 second storm. Then Arsenal will be back on the ice. And then it's a little bit longer before Bridges is back 40 seconds on top of the initial Korean power play. So this is the best chance the Koreans have of the game as another earthquake of noise begins to erupt.
And they just can't get this puck dropped here. As Nikolic just rather deliberate there, getting ourselves underway now. And Dixon immediately with the high lob. And of course, whenever it's in the air, that takes a couple of seconds out of it as well. And as far away from the uh, Canada end zone would be nice. As Korea have the opportunity, they're coming through and the rock that immediately having to show exactly why he's just as trusty as goaltender as Corbin Watson is. His first action of the game coming well out the crease towards the hash mark and getting it away. Well, there's a lot going on there for LaRock to play that puck. He's got to come out and make the decision early. If he hesitates, he's in no man's land. So you got to come out and then you've got to be ready in case there's going to be contact with the Korean player. He puts both hands on a stick, commits to the one side he wants to play it. But he's got to keep himself upright. Here comes the Rocket Man. John Sung Lan. He plays it back and the shot comes in low. And Korea are trying to maximize this opportunity they have now. But they have to make sure that they don't go a bit too hard because they go into each other there. And uh, McGregor trying to get it on the counter charge. It'll be Hickey still wanting to make the inroads as Canada now have one man back on the ice. Arsenal returns, but still Korea have the man advantage. But Canada on the shorthand at the ones that looking the most likely. The turnover is made and Sung Kyung Wan has uh, again been challenged. And Korea are far from a one-man team, but he's the one with the flair and Canada has stifled him in this game. Well, they've done exactly what they will have intended to. You need to take out a top player like him. Here he comes. He can light things up. Johnson won that. He's been forced on the outside by Dixon. That's a really good battle there. And uh, it's Canada have come out on top with Arsenal. And Hickey just couldn't quite bring it under his spell. As uh, Canada go back to full strength. Korea were still infiltrating back into the neutral zone. So they avoid the offside. But also they lose that win they had in their sails. You can't help as a neutral observer of this game and to feel the energy in this building to almost want to see Korea find a little bit of daylight. But it's a chance here that's wide of goal and the intention obviously to get it on. And maybe that could have worked out if it was just a little bit more angled that came out the other side as Korea did have some support on the backside to maybe get a shot on that ricochet. Back five on five, still no efforts on goal in the first 90 seconds of the third period. Dixon mopping things up and looking as calm as ever as he spreads it across to Westlake. And immediately you have the foray of red jerseys in front of him. Hickey uh, took that into an offside position there as his sledge was over the blue line before the puck was. And now coming at the other end is Lee G. Hume, who has that little burst of energy. And you'll get that in power ice hockey, those with the double amputees below the waist. They have that left body weight to carry, and so they can really spring themselves across the ice. But Arsenault and a combination of him and Hickey were just too strong that time out. Well, it is part of the distinction and the character of para ice hockey. Yes, the speed mobility is increased if, in fact, you're a, a single, generally a double amputee, particularly because you have a smaller target, which for the opposition to make contact with, to try to separate the man from the puck, but then equally, you haven't got the body weight nor the leverage point with the, the weight from the legs to be able just to withstand some of the punishment that comes in in the physicality of this sport. Turnover again as Bowden just sees the room to burst through, and now Bridges on the hat trick. It's Billy Bridges with so much time, and he's spoiled. Delaney with a tight angle effort on the rebound has also squirmed out. And Korea have managed to come away from that and now set on to the attack with Choi Si Woo. And uh, back there was Cozzolino. And Bowden, we mentioned how he may not be at full strength as Korea themselves now almost get the opening as they knock it around the spine of the crease. But that's come away by Armstrong. And now again, Canada, as quickly as they manage to shepherd the puck away, come back onto the attack. Arsenal retreating and will be put under the pressure of Choi Si Wu but can spin it towards Delaney. He's got Cozzolino just holding things on the blue line there, waiting to be given the green light to burst. He's had to retreat back now, Cozzolino, as it gets into a bit of a mess inside the neutral zone. And Jung Su Wan has just been taken out again by Arsenal. Those two have locked horns on many occasions over the course of the game so far. 
Corbin Smith now. Not exactly threading that the uh, right direction he would have liked, certainly not for the right pull up. And as the uh, Luke pass gets the crowd purring, and Young Sun Wan is beginning to lick his lips. Again, Arsenal, his nemesis. Arsenal's done a good job whenever he's been on the defensive line against this man on the puck now. Again, he's taken out fairly. And the furthest one forward is Dunn, who wants the puck. He's not going to get it, and Smith will be making the dart forward instead. And again, it's spun around, and Cholomiki. Even though Canada don't exactly know where the puck's about to land whenever Korea have got it, they still seem to have a man there. Well, they just generally are in good position. They understand the areas that are most likely to receive proximity or the occurrence of the puck. There are patterns in which a puck will generally follow in the course of an ice hockey match, and a good player will know that and be there ahead of its arrival. Well, that was intelligent from Johnson one on the uh, initial pass forward there. It's broken down. Now Dixon got the options with him. Sholomiki has just managed to hold it. Uh, have they? No, they haven't. And that will be an offside. Uh, a chance to breathe once more. Yeah, it's been a little bit disjointed in this third period as Canada is probably a little bit undecided as to, while they've done enough to get through to the semi-finals, it looks like from this position here, do they need to continue to rev their engines and, and burn energy here? Can they, in fact, really play a little bit more of a team game and just defensively hold? They'll take their chances when they come but they haven't had as many good looks as Korea have been able to adjust. Playing against a team like Canada is teaching Korea just how to play against them as well. These sides don't meet very often, and for the Koreans, it's a wonderful benchmark as the game goes on. You make an adjustment after the first period, you make a subsequent adjustment after the second. And here in the third, they look to have really found the countermeasure for the Canadians. Well, this game far from blunt as the final 10 minutes are about to get underway. The crowd mellowing a bit with the in-venue music, but they'll be sprung back into life now. As Dixon has it on the edge of the centre circle, and again he spins that towards the corner. And you've got to be brave in power ice hockey, and goodness me, the skaters in this game know full well but if they take a little bit too long on the puck they are going to get thumped probably into the next Paralympic Games as Westlake has it now again curving around and they like predators the Canadians they are just waiting for the moment to pounce and here is Dixon this is the perfect chance and uh, he just maybe bought a little bit too much time as he tried to drift it back onto the favoured left and uh, away that goes but Armstrong immediately with the reflexes like a cat has got his arm out and spins it to McGregor back it goes this is good Cozzolino can't quite find a gap but still they recycle things in tricky circumstances McGregor with his back to goal still conjures out the feed for Westlake and he's now on the ground and he still finds McGregor and that was tenacious as it was brilliant and Canada have got a sick goal of the game and that is probably the best of the lot because we talked about a disjointed third period well they've turned that around there in one play and they have battered home a sick yeah this is a signature Canadian goal as their persistence on the puck and their management of the puck was simply perfect because in the end they get a feed and this for McGregor to catch that puck behind his body and he's a left hand strong, but he can shoot right too. But that is so tough to reach back behind you. It's a little bit like dealing with the kids in the back of the car and still driving at 100 miles an hour. You want to make sure that you got it under control, but you got to let the message be known. And he did high into the back of the Korean goal. That goal, an absolute pleasure. As Canada now have surely secured themselves with a medal in these games. Will it be silver or gold? That is to be seen at a later stage. But Korea will now battle for bronze, it seems. And goodness me, you wouldn't bet against them. They've given it their all in this game. It's all about the recovery now, but they may be recovering from a real hammering as Bowden just can't get his stick onto the end of the puck. Bridges 
has again rode a couple of challenges. And just look how quickly they move it around. It's like the ice has been shrunk tenfold by the Koreans, but still Canada can negotiate the way through trouble. Well, they've got a real good read, the Canadians. They look to be a better side than they were a year ago, even at the World Championships when they took gold. And that's saying quite a bit, isn't it? They've upped the ante as they constantly are having to against their southern rival in North America, the mighty USA. Those two back and forth. It's the Americans who are still the reigning gold medal Paralympic champions from Sochi. But Canada here are putting on a display and moving through the gears in a professional performance, but still playing with passion and making sure they execute at every turn. Sung Wan hasn't really had the ammunition to fire from so far in this game. And Korea, of course, would come into this on the defensive. And they've done a good job in competing for the most part. But the moments where they've switched off or Canada were too good, the ones in red have certainly made them pay. As there may be room here if they can get to that first. And even Arsenal on the last line, just inside the Korean offensive zone, does enough to get enough purchase on it to get it away. Armstrong brought to a standstill. He's so effective there, Armstrong, just managing that puck as Korea almost get an outlet. Although it looks a little bit stilted and rather stagnant, those positions where they're just holding the puck, it's their preference over a turnover, where they run out of room, they run out of ideas, and they can just give it away carelessly, or they can take it to the boards and make Korea have to take it from them. And ultimately, the Koreans had to work that much harder in which to do so. Well, the Koreans there trying to just dump it long and then be able to scurry forwards. But again, it's Canada who repel. And they look to come forward with interest with Arsenal. We just lost control of the puck there and were perhaps a bit distracted by the menacing charge towards him from Cho Byung Suk. Arsenal again, the man with possession. And these final six minutes, Canada will look to play out and add further layers to their very impressive cape. Solomiki is just pounced upon, and away that goes. And Laroc had a bit of involvement in the first seconds of this final period, but since then has been a bit of a bystander. See how commanding he is, though, handling that puck. The first touch of the puck in this third period, he came out and had to deal with the onrush of what maybe for a moment looked like a Korean breakaway. So he's so confident with that, and that'll give Ken Babby, of course, equally great confidence in making the decision to make the replacement. They felt comfortable, Canada. They wanted to have both of the keepers active and sharp. Sholomiki on the turn as he is now plotting away through for a seventh Canada goal. Armstrong with a bit of room from distance. It's trapped by Dunn, and will the job be done? Is no, and it's answered by the Korean defence very well indeed. And now we will get a penalty, and I think that is going to be against Sholomiki. He certainly looks the most disappointed. Yeah, I think he's either going to get high sticking here or he's going to get an elbowing call as he immediately grimaces as he gets the ire of the Austrian referee. And it's going to be an elbowing call. Nikolic comes across and does his best. People's elbow and indicates to the timekeeper's benches. Here you see it, shoulder Mickey. And it isn't really, I think it's the shoulder, but what it is is it's the extension, the follow through with the lifted arm. And more often than not, that power and that being noticed in ice hockey and para ice hockey anymore, if you're noticeable in the way that you make contact with the opposition, then you're most likely gonna get penalized. And that's understandable, it makes sense. The game has changed in a measurable amount as far as how it is refereed and pair ice hockey no exception either. Boris Sholomiki, the 37 year old, made his debut in 2015 against the Republic of Korea. Back three goals at last year's World Championships. Now be hoping his defensemen do the work to deny Korea their first goal of the game. And that face off. Infringement there from the uh, Korean involved, I think, and that was Jan Jong Ho. So we'll have a, another face off now, but he won't be allowed back.
So the linesman there has ordered him away, and instead will be Lee Ju Seung. As Korea are still well within Canada territory, will they make the most of it? The thing about Canada is they have a lot of flair when they're on the puck, but this has been a game where they've had to be dogged and determined. And they've been that in abundance, whether they've been in their own zone or in the offensive zone as well, as we saw with the sixth goal. But this is the opportunity tomorrow for it for Choi Si Wu. Big moment for Korea, and it's saved by La Rock. But he's had a big save to make that, as Choi Si Wu would have heard the cheers around him. He would have felt the shivers down his spine, but he just couldn't quite get the goal to match. And that's an intentional play by La Rock in goal, making it look like he's catching butterflies with a monster-sized net here, as he just takes that one out of the sky and. It's a job done well and done quite comfortably by La Rock in the end. But he gives it a little bit of pizzazz as he presses it up and it gives it just that extra bit for style. Still 90 seconds or so for Korea to maximize the opportunity once again handed in front of them. Remember, they started the third period, two players up. And they couldn't quite foil the Canadians on that occasion as they come forward again. And I'm surprised Jung Sung Wan isn't part of this power play. The number 14 for Korea, who's probably just been allowed a few moments rest. Because, of course, there'll be a big game coming up. And goodness me, Lee Jae Wung, who has been formidable in this game, almost had pie on his face that as it was sprung from deep. And it just glanced him and spun wide. Arsenal now. Uh, Canada on the shorthand are still looking threatening. But now they've left spaces behind them. Lee Ju Seung is ousted by Armstrong. And Sung Jung Wan is back on the ice. Put going deep. 30 seconds remaining of the Korean power play. And once again, Korea have done all they can. They just haven't quite got that level of quality Canada have, but no one really in the world has. As Hickey is showing exactly why, how they could turn it on. And he's hit the outside of the post. And a chunk of paint flies away with the puck. The counter charge for Canada nearly paid dividends. Last chance for Korea to really pin themselves in Canada territory. As the Canadians are back to full strength. And things slow down now with Cho Byung Suk. Byung Sung Hwan is waiting for the puck. He's got a bit of room near the blue line. He now has possession and he squares it nicely. And this is a chance on the left hand. It's drill wide. And the effort coming through from Kim Young Sung. And goodness me, that'd have been singing his name after that. That was their best chance for Korea in this hockey game. It went wide of goal, but they had a little bit of room and a little bit of just extra space at the end of the power play that they weren't able to do much with. And sometimes you get little soft pockets there where the teams transition to get back to even strength. And Korea just whistle it wide. Armstrong, that was superb initially on the recovery and now in the offensive play as well as he looks to supply the goods for McGregor and again he does not take no for an answer and he's batted it in despite seemingly being thwarted on the first occasion he was spread out on the ice like butter and he's still cannoned it high past Lee Jae Wong and Canada have a sensational seventh it doesn't get much better than this you come in, you receive the service, and then you get knocked down, and then finally falling right to exhaustion. You get up one more time with your core strength, and you elevate the puck into the top of Korea's goal. And you see the look on the face of the Korean captain. He says, what was that? As McGregor pulls a little rabbit out of the hat for Canada's seventh. Eighth goal of the tournament for Tyler McGregor. And goodness me, he has popped up at the right occasion, hasn't he? He got 12 in the World Championships 12 months ago. He was the joint highest scorer there. And he has put himself right at the top of that mantle in these Paralympic Games. Into the final two minutes, a what has been a semi-final that has not disappointed, and Canada have uh, been asked a lot of questions by Korea, but they always seem to have the answers. And this was the game perhaps Canada needed, that test 
to reassure them, yes, we really are that good. And we can win the gold in this tournament as Arsenal looks to wrap it up. And he's denied by Lee Jae Wong, who just deserves a lot of credit for the part he's had to play in this game as well. Delaney flooding around the back of the net, almost got himself stuck there. Now McGregor, what's he going to do next? Back for Arsenal. Dixon's tapping the ice and saying, look, I'm in loads of room on the blue line. Um, he's gone for the direct option, Arsenal towards the backboard. McGregor there with him, as is Westlake. But trying to stop them is Cho Young Jae. He's doing a, a good job as well. The teammate Jang Jung Ho is there for support. But of course it's Canada that come away. And so, he's getting McGregor's stats. Seven shots, two goals. But the two goals he got were of the same accord. And they're both that battling nature. He was denied the first time, but he still went to strike. And goodness me, he got him his ball. Well, he was the one that was denied in the opening period, once in the breakaway, and then on the ricochet to the backside that it looked like he was going to score on the open goal. So maybe that's a little bit of the extra reason why McGregor is motivated to finish the play, because he felt a little bit expelled earlier in the game when he thought he was in a position to score. Well, the rock there was just dancing with his wrists around the puck. I'm not quite sure how much of that was intentional, but nevertheless, it will attract the face off. And a last chance for Korea to strike a goal. There'll be uh, a quick team discussion on the far side first as we look at that save from Lee J. Wung. It's an excellent save because most of the expectation from the keepers is that the shot is going to be elevated. That's very difficult for them to defend in the top half of the net. So they are immediately anticipating that as they go up. As you see the execution of a timeout here from Korea. They'd love to try inside this last minute against a world-class opponent like the Canadians. A set play, if they can execute it, it's again just one of those little things that gives them encouragement going into what's going to be a bronze medal match in two days' time. Well, Ken Bavi's ditched the paper, he's got out the whiteboard for the final 35 seconds or so as the crowd, you'll see that Mexican wave arrive onto the screen now. They have been a joy, and they've gone hand in hand with the hockey game that we have had in front of us over the three periods in this. And it doesn't matter who you are supporting, you are enjoying this match. Final throws of the game. Armstrong with possession of the puck. As Canada will try and achieve the shutout. And in fact, well, it's at the best form of defence, isn't it? Bridges there, getting on the end of the puck. And we'll kill the final few seconds of this one. Prepare for the noise levels, because this career side is something special. But they've come against a Canada side who will battle it out for bronze on the final day of the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. The world champions are here, and they are wanting their first golden gong since 2006 and they seem to have all the right attributes in order to get it this is a special side but also on the flip side a special story as well this republic of korea team have given us some exceptional scripts over the course of this tournament so far and they will have a chance to medal themselves but the final score in the semi-final canada seven republic of korea nil It's a pretty fair reflection of a day's work. The end scoreline is McGregor ends up with a pair of goals in this hockey game. And he along, he gets the last two, the sixth and the seventh one, as both teams acknowledge each other with full regard. And the Koreans, I think, know in their minds that that's the standard that we need to get to. And you only understand it when you play against it as they come through and smiles abound as they are on to a bronze medal game. And in that bronze medal game, they've got to be favorites as who will they play? Well, that's yet to be determined. And Canada coming through the lines and these were respectful exchanges with the referees and the linesmen. Billy Bridge is there saying good job. He's a very key leader on this Canadian side and equally a great 
ambassador for the sport of para ice hockey. And this, these spontaneous moments from the Koreans, they'll now make their way around. It's the Canadians in the middle of the ice acknowledging their support and all of these fans. Again, it's the Koreans who make their way around and make sure that they get as close to acknowledging each and every single one of these fans that came and supported them here today. Six shots on goal in the third period for Canada. The two goals, one shot overall in the game for the Koreans. They end up with a tally of shots. It's 24 to two, the Canadians with a real impressive day's work. It's now Korea take their moment to shine and to sign off as we look across three periods of work. Canada with the four goals in that opening frame. One in the second, two in the third. And Korea just bookend that second period. Let's allow the Koreans a chance here to exchange with their fans. Well, para ice hockey in Korea is on a wave right now, and these skaters, these athletes, are making sure that the 10,000 strong crowd are on the surfboard with them. These are special moments. And those on the ice and those in the stands will be back in a couple of days' time to battle for a medal to reward their efforts. Something they have been doing in these matches is throwing the Bendabi mascots up into the crowd. And this is a very impromptu thing, but a very personal thing between the Koreans and their fans, but equally to the world. They are letting everybody know that they are most welcome to love pair ice hockey like they do likewise, and to share in the fun and the delight that is Paralympic sport and is this particular event. It has been marvelous to be a part of in this year. This is ceremony. Shots of the first lady of the Republic of Korea in the crowd as well. As I'm sure she, like everyone else here at the Ganglin Hockey Centre, will have admired the efforts from the Republic of Korea and Canada. Great storylines in the para ice hockey tournament have been abound. The Korean one going for gold comes to a subtle end here as they will go for bronze. The Canadians were outstanding in this match, taking it with seven goals to nothing. Yeah, a full foray of goals as well of different types and from all across the roster. Canada will be back, battling out for the top prize here at Pyeongchang 2018 but the Koreans are not over yet either. Here at the Gangneung Hockey Centre, Canada 7, Republic of Korea 0. It will be the Canadians to battle it out in the final.